let's look at some shorting strategies here. How can we make money by shorting? What do we like to look for? One of the easiest ways to be able to know again how to short a stock is all about looking at the candlesticks. Looking at the candlesticks and looking at the shadows. Now, if you guys don't know much about candlesticks, candlesticks are going to be able to break down and tell us where a stock went to in a certain time frame. So if this is a two minute time frame, we have two minutes right here, which represents this candle where it was within that two minute period. This shows that the stock got all the way up to the price of $5, fell on down because the candle's black or red, depending on what chart you're looking at, fell on down to the price of let's say 450. Within that two minute time frame, it maybe also touched 431. And maybe again, within that two minute time frame, it spiked all the way up towards around that you know 515-ish mark. So a candlestick is going to help us understand where a stock was within this time frame. Now the best thing to always look at is looking at right here. This top part of the candle. This top part of the candle is called the upper shadow. And when we see an upper shadow, we know that there is going to be weakness. Now you might say, Deck, well there's a lower shadow right here. I'm talking about when we see a true upper shadow. When we see a stock climb and we have a candlestick, climb, we have a candlestick, climb, and what do we have? Big upper shadow, then the stock starts reversing on down. A candlestick essentially is telling us that the stock went from $5, spiked all the way up towards, let's say, the price of $5.50, and it couldn't hold its gains. Touched this area, and then came crashing all the way back on down. When a stock goes on a very big spike, we want to see it hold its gains. We want to see that stock be able to continue to move itself on up. And if it can't hold itself on up, that means, again, people took profits. That means shorters moved on in. That means people were selling their shares. So if we spike and we, again, hit an area and all of a sudden it rapidly comes back on down within a short time frame, such as one to two to three minutes, that's showing extreme weakness on this play where the stock is going to reverse. So where would be a great example of that just today? Right? I don't ever like to save any sort of textbook photos because I like to show you all my strategies. You can find them in the exact day I'm teaching. Let's go to the number one top gainer, CPIX. CPIX, we look at the day that this stock has spiked. We look at today and we can just go back to, let's go to a two minute time frame right here, right? Two minute time frame. What can we notice about this two minute time frame? If we take a screenshot, you say, Deck, I want to be a great shorter. Well, what can we do with our shorting? We can say, hey, every time I see an upper shadow, I bet you the stock is going to have a red candle following it. So whenever we see an upper shadow, we could say to ourselves, hey, watch for a reversal. Hey, let's get ready to short. Hey, let's go ahead and locate our play on the short side because every single time we're able to make money. And you want to talk about the biggest reversal on the day. Look at the stock climbing, 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 and look at the upper shadow. This shows that the stock was able to go from this $5 mark, spike all the way up to 550, but right when it came up to 550 resistance, everyone retreated. Everyone took their profits and shorters moved on in. And right when you see that upper shadow, you could jump in and you can make money as the stock falls all the way on down. Upper shadows, the analogy I always like to give, and a little childish, but at the same time, it works very easily, is just imagine this as if you are climbing Mount Everest. You are climbing Mount Everest, climbing Mount Everest, climbing Mount Everest, and at the very top of Mount Everest, what do you do when you get to the very top? You say, wahoo, I made it. You go ahead, you stick a flag in at the very top of Mount Everest, so everyone that comes up to Mount Everest in the future knows that you were here, knows that you accomplished it. Now, what happens after, again, you get to the very top of Mount Everest? What do you do? Do you stay up there and live up there forever? No, you go back on down. So think about this as climbing a mountain. You climb a mountain all the way on up, you stick your flag in on this, wow, and then you go all the way back on down. Take a look right here. This is us climbing Mount Everest. We're climbing, we're climbing, we're climbing. We stuck a flag right at the top, let everyone know that this is the top. We made it to the peak. And now we start heading back down the opposite side. Shorting can be as simple as looking at upper shadows. And a lot of times, guys, whenever you see an upper shadow, you're going to be able to know that the stock is going to have some sort of reversal. I mean, TOMZ just started spiking power hour, but what is this long black line? Our reversal area, where we can go ahead and put a short in on this play, right? All these plays, OTMO, OTMO, big upper shadow. I tried to short this one at 475. The stock came up to 470, just missed it by five cents. Now again, I'm still happy. I'm up $2,631 on the day, but at the same time, OTMO could have been a great short. 
What about PPSI? Anything on PPSI right here? Let's see. You know, there's not always going to be perfect upper shadows because if we take a look over on PPSI, PPSI essentially just has been dropping all day. But even with, again, you know, with the stock dropping all day, you can still see a couple little upper shadows on this play, can't you? You can see an upper shadow when you take a look at, you know, right here, the stock climbing, climbing, climbing. Here's us climbing the mountain, put the flag at the top of the mountain, then reverse. You can even check it out right here, where again, the stock is climbing, climbing, climbing put the flag at the top of the mountain and reverse on down. So it's very neat to see, it's very cool to see that whenever you guys see these patterns, you know, ARDX, you know, number three top gainer right here, ARDX, upper shadow, stock starts reversing. Dex, so you're telling me every single time I see a top gainer on the day, when I see an upper shadow, it has a great chance of reversing? Absolutely. So you're telling me, you know, usually I wake up in the morning, I usually don't know what stock's going to be the best one, and I usually end up taking a loss because I'm buying at the break of resistance and trying to nail the breakout when honestly I could just wait for the breakout to happen and then just short it there instead? Absolutely, right? This is how I'm able to make $560,000 throughout this whole entire year. If I break down again how much I trade in each way, I probably have about mm, 100 trades. I would say 83 of them are going to be on the short side. I would probably say 15 of them are going to be on dip buys. And I would say the final little amount right here, team, would be more on, you know what, breakouts. What, that last little three or four, whatever is left, that's when I would be looking for breakouts. But I rarely look for breakouts because breakouts are a gamble most times. Breakouts are, again, you know, hoping that you can go ahead and make some money. And right now, I just want to bring this on over. You guys can see everything right here. I never hide anything. I can log into my brokerage statements. And I wish, it, you know, my brokerage statements could show you guys, you know, how much I short compared to going long. That would be a cool thing. But if we scroll on down to year-to-date P&L, breaking down every single month, I've had some huge months. I had one red month, $561,000. This is my biggest month of trading ever. And this is, or not the biggest month, biggest year of trading ever, over half a million dollars. I'm 28 years old. 28 years old, was able to make $561,000. 80% of it is from shorting these stocks. 80% of it is waiting for a breakout to happen and saying, hey, there's the upper shadow. Let me short this on down, right? It is kind of as simple as that in a lot of cases. Now, there are, of course, other strategies that we want to be looking at and we want to be focused on. So let's keep it moving. Let's go into this a little bit. But going into upper shadows, what do we have here? Upper shadows show weakness. When a stock spikes and can't hold its gains, it makes buyers believe that the stock is weak, which equals selling and shorting. Long upper shadows indicate a reversal coming on up. And we could see, you know, the stock has been moving on up. Upper shadow reverses back on down. You can see a stock moving on up and upper shadow hits, reverses, start coming back on down. You could see a nice stock, you know, moving itself on up, hits its upper shadow, starts moving all the way back on down. Upper shadow is easiest way to just go ahead and make money in the stock market. Stop listening to stock to it. Stop listening to Twitter. Stop listening to random people that your dad's friend, uncle said he worked for this company and this is going to be coming out with some sort of phase trials. Look for, again, the top gainer every single day. Watch that upper shadow and watch yourself just collect that money. Really, it's great. I love it, okay? <laughs> so it's beautiful. Now, what else can we be doing here, team? We can be shorting previous top gainers. I've said this many times already in this lesson. I'll say it again. I'm a huge fan of answers being given to me. I'm a huge fan of knowing I'm going to be making money. People always compare the stock market to a casino. I don't compare the stock market to the casino. And when I do compare it to a casino, I compare myself as I'm the house, not the tourist. You know who's the tourist? The tourists are the people that are looking for breakouts. The tourists are the people that are putting money on black or red during roulette. The tourists are the people that, again, go to uh, sit down, throw money out there, get their chips, and they're sitting back. You don't want to be the tourist. You want to be the person that's collecting the dice, the person in the cashier handing out the money. You want to be the person that is, again, sending out the cards. Not, again, you know, the person that's trying to make a couple dollars. Don't treat it like a casino. Be the house. The house always wins. Don't be the tourist. So wouldn't it be better for the answer to be given to us? So for this instance, we know most penny stocks are non-credible companies. Even when they have a good press release behind it, we know the majority of penny stocks are not going to be able to hold their gains very well. If a stock spikes 100%, it's just not going to hold. There are going to be rare cases, probably a dime a dozen throughout the entire year, that we'll see a stock go on a $100 climb, multi-day spiker. But it's not often. And you know that those times can get scary as a shorter. I'm not sitting here and saying that you are going to make money on every single short that you make. But if you, again, follow these strategies, you will make money on a lot of shorts that you make. So what's a great way to make money? Number one, Look at the upper shadows, but what else? We also have shorting previous top gainers. 
Look for stocks that have spiked over a 90 on the RSI. Look for stocks that have spiked more than three days in a row. Look for stocks that have large overextended moves. Remember team, these are penny stocks, not stocks that are going to hold their gains. So as I already showed you a few huge examples already, we take looks at plays that have been great shorts recently. SCV was a, pre, a top gainer on Monday. Guess what happened? It was a huge loser on Tuesday, right? And that's how you can trade a lot of your plays. You can go through a lot of these top gainers previously and see that they usually turn into big time top losers. So SCV, nice big spike. SEV, nice big dump. AERC, nice big spike. AERC, nice big dump. DWAC, just showing you the big ones. Nice big spike. DWAC, nice big dump. But it doesn't even have to be that. It could be as you know easy as you know if we want to look at CPIX, right? CPIX. Already today's a nice big spike. Get ready for tomorrow now. Watch for a nice dump. You know all this whole entire list right here is a list of potential shorts for tomorrow. So what I always like to do every single night is I go to finviz.com. I go to finviz right here and I write down CPIX because I know this could be a great short tomorrow. I write down MEIP because I know this could be a great short tomorrow. All these plays are again going to be great opportunities. I already showed you again a huge list if we go over to HUDI. Guess or excuse me, let's go over to like HX. HX goes on a massive rip. HX goes on a massive dump. We can go on LGVN. LGVN goes on a massive spike. LGVN goes on a massive dump. Even when you take a look at the big boys, such as GameStop, you know, one of the biggest spikes in 2021 so far, and this is one of those super rare cases where it keeps on going, 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 it's never gonna hold this. It's never gonna hold a $500 move, and you can actually see the stock went from $18 to $500. From $500 to $18, right? You know, it's just, it gives everything back. And that's why it's so, it's so rare to be able to, of course, you know, um, if you keep on holding on a lot of these plays, to actually take a loss. Now, the scary thing is on shorting, and please do not get me wrong. Please do not take this as this is an automatic way to make money. There is risk in shorting. If you, again, short a stock such as GME at $40, it could spike up to 500 And you know what? That could take out your whole entire account. Most likely would take out your whole entire account. So the thing is, you do need to be a disciplined trader. You can't just hold on to a stock forever and say, oh, it'll come down eventually. And while that may be the case, you may go through a whole entire loss of an account where your broker takes you all out. So I cannot sit here and I cannot say and again preach to you guys about short everything. It'll always pay out. That's not true. It's simply not true. But I will tell you, if a stock spikes over 100, 200, 300 percent, the likelihood, the likelihood of it holding over the next week or so is very, very slim. Very, very slim. So when we go ahead and we take a look over on the screeners right here, something that we can easily do if we head over to all is just go to RSI. Go to RSI, go to overbought. These are all stocks that are overbought. Most likely not going to be holding very well. You can see uh, DRNA, notice how the stock's just moving sideways, got bought out at a certain price. DVD, got moving sideways, got bought out at a certain price. Let's look at one you know, that maybe isn't getting bought out at a certain price that has a great chance of falling on down in the near future, PLIN. You know, stock went from 95 cents up to 206. Now, the only thing that's helping out PLIN at this moment is the fact that PLIN, this is a play that's doing it little by little, day after day after day after day, which has been about a month. The best chance to see spikes isn't always just by looking at overbought stocks, but I'm talking about stocks that are doing it all way too quick within a certain day. All within way too quick in a certain day. You know, for instance, if we take a look over on PLI, uh, excuse me, not, not PLIN, if we take a look over on PPSI, PPSI, right? When you go from $6 to $12, that's too much in a day. Some stocks may take a month to do that, and that's okay because you're slowly moving up, slowly moving down, but moving up, get a couple sellers. Moving up, get a couple sellers. When you do it all in one day, you get a massive dump in the same day or the next day. Take a perfect example on ADGI. ADGI, guys, was a top gainer yesterday. Woke up this morning, ADGI had a huge spike, and then it came crashing on down. Is it natural for a stock to make this move? Not at all. It's all based off momentum. And the moment momentum shifts and everyone starts selling, everyone runs for their lives. You know, again, the saying, stock trading is very emotional. 
and traders are very emotional. So the moment that again, everyone starts seeing ADGI starts going on a spike, what does everyone turn into? Oh, I love ADGI. ADGI is the best play I've ever seen in my life. $50 to $60, everyone buckle up, we're going up to the moon. 60 to 70, we're not stopping until 100, baby. 70 to 80, oh my goodness, I'm never selling ADGI in my life. Then guess what happens? We form an upper shadow, which we just taught you about. Stock hits $80 and now goes to 70, now goes to 60, now goes to 65, now goes again to 50, now goes all the way down to 40. Guess how momentum just shifted? 80 to 70, dump. This stock's a scam. 70 to 60, I hated this stock. I've never said one nice thing about this play. 60 to 50, I never wanted it again. You'll trade 80 GI in my life, <laughs> right? Everyone goes from absolutely loving a play to absolutely hating the stock. And now again, people are over it, forget about it, and move on to another play to almost do the same exact thing, right? Stock traders are so emotionally based, and that's why, again, we always got to be one step ahead of them. We got to think about the psychology behind them. Know that ADGI isn't going to be able to hold up its gains in the long term. Know that this play is going to be able to turn around. Know this one is most likely going to be dumping in the near future. So when we take a look at ADGI, it's just too hard of a spike, very hard drop. And it was a top gainer yesterday. This one's going to start getting a little bit ugly in the future. So what did we talk about? What it's again, kind of the name of the game today. Not taking guesses in the stock market, not taking gambles in the stock market, but having the answers given to us. We first, again, could have top gainers of today, wait for an upper shadow, and then we short them, or we wait for top gainers from previously. And we know they're already overbought. Most likely in the upcoming day, there's going to be a big shorting opportunity. So we can make money that way. Or last but not least, we can just short pre-market top gainers. In most cases, guys, stocks that spike up in pre-market don't hold their gains very well, which is a very you know, uh, common misconception with a lot of new traders. A lot of new traders wake up and they see a stock up 110% and they say, that's the one I want to trade. And I say, why do you want to trade that one? They say, because it's up 110%. Well, that means it already spiked up 110%. If I came up to you and said, hey, there's a stock that's extremely overbought, probably is going to, again, be falling any moment now. You want to get in on it? You turn to me and you'd say, no way, I don't want to get into it. But you still are the same person saying, well, I want to buy the stock up 110%, aka that's the stock I just described. So we need to, again, think about that. The majority of stocks that have large gap ups in pre-market are usually the number one best short at the start of the day. But a lot of new traders don't think about it like that. A lot of new traders see that it's the top gainer on the day, so that's the one they want to trade. So one of the most profitable ways to make money is when you guys wake up in the morning and you see a stock already up 100%, watch for it to go on a quick morning spike at the start of the day and watch for it to dump on down, right? This is a very simple and easy way to trade, 85% win rate in most cases. Perfect example today, right? I always like to just show today's examples. PPSI. PPSI was one of the best top gainers of today in pre-market, right? Let's just go over towards this, make this a little bit bigger for every single trader to see. PPSI closed off the day yesterday at 773, moved up towards $8, moved up towards $9, moved up towards $12, even at the start of the day. Guess what happened? Got a quick little spike, dumped on off, right? Quick little spike, dumped on off. Today, it's in the red. This was the number one best top gainer on the day. And again, the reason why so many traders love this play is just because it was a top gainer on the day. A top gainer on the day does not mean it's going to be the best stock, right? Let's check out IMGN. What has IMGN done today? IMGN today has gone from 480 in pre-market, spiked up to 736. A lot of traders say, oh, I would love to get in on this play. The stock's up 80% on the day. And you know what happens? The stock went from $70 and came crashing all the way down towards around $5. Just because a stock looks like it's one of the best top gainers on the day doesn't mean it's going to be able to hold its gains. It already went on its rip and run. Notice what NLSP did today. NLSP went on a big spike in pre-market. Guess what happened? It came crashing on down. Remember it, team. This is not me going through weeks and months of textbooks and trying to find examples that work on what I'm saying. Everything that I've taught you so far is from today. From today. And you can now, again, mix and match everything that you've learned from upper shadows, where again, NLSP, wow, this is a pre-market top gainer, which also formed an upper shadow right here, which indicated that the reversal was going to be coming, and this reversal led to a very big drop. Oh, wow. So we have pre-market top gainers with upper shadows leading towards very big drops. Or again, we can look at PPSI, which is a previous top gainer with a pre-market top gainer, which also had, again, a few different upper shadows that indicate when the stock's gonna reverse. So we're, again, putting these three main strategies together to really be able to have this just fire win rate, to just be able to take down again the market in the penny stock world. And I know again, when you say you're shorting a play, sometimes traders don't like it. And the only reason why traders don't like a play when you're shorting it is just because they're going long on it. 
No one wants to ever hear, hey guys, I'm shorting 10,000 shares when you're the person that wants the stock going up. And then again, you know, someone is saying they're trying to push the stock on down. So when you're saying you're a shorter, you sometimes get some hate for it. When you're a shorter, you might, say, you might have some people out there saying, no, 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 this thing's going to squeeze you out, right? But what do I know? I know these are penny stocks. This isn't Apple. This isn't Tesla. Shorting Tesla is not a good idea. Trust me. I know. It's not a good idea. Shorting Apple usually isn't a good idea. Shorting the stock market isn't a good idea. But shorting a stock with two employees that it's up 100% because of some random press release that came out today and traders are just trying to make a quick buck on a low float stock, hey, it's not going to hold on up. You can either, again, be on the short side when the stock starts falling, or you can, again, keep on holding and just kind of complain on stock twits, right? You got a few different things. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm being blunt today. I feel like I'm being, I'm being like, you know, a little, little, I got a little uh, tension. I got a little meanness underneath my voice today. I don't know what's going on here. It's just, it's just, I want you guys to win. I want you guys to profit. Start again, you know, cashing checks, baby. Again, take them out. Take out the longs. We got this. So I'm, I'm fired up right here going over this because I know, again, you guys are going to start making some big-time cash and be able to ba- make some big-time money. Oh, baby, we're going to get them out. We're, again, taking down the longs here. Woo! So um, stocks that are top gainers in pre-market have already made the most of their move. The majority of top gainers in pre-market will fall, especially with ones without news. Stocks that are up over 200%, you know, usually in a the morning, they're never going to hold its gains. Take a look at every single time the stock gaps up, ANPC. Every time the stock gaps up, whoop, upper shadow, dumps on down. Gaps on up, crashes. Gaps on up, crashes. Upper shadow, next few days, dumps on down. Right? Upper shadow, stock dumps on down. Gaps on up, crashes. Gaps on up, crashes. Right? Take a look right here. Stock, again, forms a nice big upper shadow, gets a huge dump on down. Right? We can see all, you know, all these times that these stocks, again, just dump on down just because they're top gainers. And so many people like to play them, but end up usually getting crushed on them. Right? So make sure that you guys are taking this into consideration. The last one, very simple, very easy, shorting trend lines. Right? The moment, again, a trend line cracks is the moment that you guys can go ahead and see the stock go from the bullish side to the bearish side. When a stock goes from bullish to bearish, from the top side of the trend line to the bottom, we know that this is going to be an easy area of reversing where it just t- really turns into stop losses are hit, shorters move in, and again, profits are being taken. So trend line lessons, make sure you guys go check those out. Those are absolutely awesome. But I really wanted to break this down right here. Give you guys four different strategies on how to make money. If that's shorting uh, upper shadows, if that's shorting previous top gainers, shorting pre-market top gainers, or again, shorting trend lines. Another example of just today on a shorting trend line, if you guys need one, is all you have to do is connect the dots. Connect the dots from this dot to 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 this dot. Guess what happens? When we go ahead and we take a look over on this play, you can clearly see where the stock is considered buyers in control and where the stock is considered sellers in control. So what do we have? The bulls. Bulls are the buyers. Bulls are gonna be anything from this blue line up. These are the buyers, blue line up. And we know these are the bears, right? Bears are gonna be the shorters. And this is going to be anything from this red line down. So once the stock goes from bulls to bears, that's where again, shorters take over. Let's get rid of these lines so you guys can see it again. Can you guys see it now? Right? So bulls are on the top, bears on the bottom. And just like that, we can see every single strategy that I've taught you today. Every single strategy that I taught you today in this video can also apply to the same exact stocks that are moving today. So make sure you guys take this information, study this information, become an expert at this information, and go ahead and have yourself a $560,000 a year. Go ahead and make the biggest profits you've been able to make. Stop again showing up every morning as a tourist. Start showing up every single day as the house. Stop showing up every day trying to make it big and start showing up every single day knowing that you're going to be consistently adding gains to your portfolio. That's what it's all about. So awesome job. Awesome work. Can't wait to again continue to kill it with you guys. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know. All right.